Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa <coughs> Okay, so yesterday we <coughs> read up to the uh, the giving of the uh, uh, the fire sermon, and uh <coughs> so then all of the uh, following of the. Um, the Kasapa brothers, altogether a thousand um, <coughs> renunciants, um, have realized arahantship, and then uh, the the uh, account continues uh, in the uh, the Vinaya Mahavaga. <coughs> <coughs> now, when the Blessed One had lived at Gai Asisa as long as he chose, he set out to wander by stages to Rajagaha <coughs> with a large following of bhikkhus, with a thousand, with a thousand bhikkhus, with all the former Madhatera ascetics. Wandering by stages, he at length reached Rajagaha. And there he stayed in the sapling grove at the Supatita shrine. <coughs> That's probably about four days walk. I think I, I've done that myself. Walk from Rajgir to... Because Gaya is sort of in the area of Bodh Gaya. <coughs> it's still on the river Narendra. It's still right on the river Narendra. So it's very close to Bodh Gaya. So I think it's about... Four days walk, and uh, I mean, we were we were trying to move. <coughs> two hour, two and a half hour bus ride. Okay. <coughs> Saini Abhimbisara, king of Magadha, heard. It seems that the monk Gotama, the son of the Sakyans, who went forth into homelessness from a Sakyan clan, has come to Rajagaha and is living in the sapling grove of the Supatita Shrine. <coughs> now the good name of Master Gotama has been spread thus. The Blessed One is such, since he is accomplished, fully enlightened, perfect in knowledge and conduct, sublime, the knower of worlds, the incomparable leader of men to be tame, <coughs> the teacher of gods and humans, enlightened, blessed. He makes known this world with its deities, its maras and its divinities, this generation with its monks and brahmins, with its princes and humans, which he has, which he himself, which he has himself realized through direct knowledge. He teaches the dhamma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the meaning and the letter, and he explains a holy life that is utterly perfect and pure. It is good to go and see such accomplished ones. <coughs> then, accompanied by twelve hosts, by a hundred and twenty thousand of Magad and Brahman ho householders, Sanya Bimbisara, king of Magadha, went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side. But of the twelve hosts of Brahmin householders, some paid homage to the Blessed One and sat down to one side, some exchanged greetings with him, 
And when this courteous and formal talk was finished, sat down at one side, some raised their, ha their hands, palms together in salutation to the Blessed One, and sat down at one side. Some pronounced their name and clan in the Blessed One's presence, and sat down at one side. Some kept silence and sat down at one side. So the whole array of <coughs> different kinds of respect and reverence or, uh, how do you say, indifference or, or lack of actual interest. They wondered, does the great monk lead the holy life under Uruveda Kasapa? Or does Uruveda Kasapa lead the holy life under the great monk? <coughs> But the Blessed One became aware in his mind of the thought in their minds, and he addressed the Venerable Uruvela Kasapa in stanzas. What did he see, the lean teacher who dwells at Uruvela, that he left the fires? I ask of you this question, Kasapa. How did you come to leave fire worshipping? Sights and sounds and tastes and concubines are the rewards promised for sacrifice. Of worldly things I saw they are a stain. Then worship and sacrifice gave joy no more. And then the blessed one, but if your heart finds no delight in these, Kasapa, said the Blessed One, in sights and sounds, even in tastes as well, what then delights your heart here in this world of gods and humans, Kasapa? Tell me that. I saw the state of peace, not of this world, where is no owning and no sensual being, no otherness, no being led by others. Then worship and sacrifice gave no more joy. Then the venerable Uruvela Kasapa rose from his seat and arranging his robe on one shoulder, he prostrated himself with his head at the Blessed One's feet, saying, Lord, the Blessed One is my guide. I am a disciple. The Blessed One is my guide. I am a disciple. <coughs> then the twelve hosts of Magad and Brahman householders thought, Uruvela Kasaba lives the holy life under the Blessed One. The Blessed One, aware in his mind of the thought in their minds, then gave them progressive instruction. At length, the spotless, immaculate vision of the Dhamma arose then and there in eleven of the twelve hosts of the Magadan Brahman householders. All that is subject to arising is subject to cessation. And one host became adherent. Then Sainiya Bimbisara, king of Magadha, saw and reached and found and penetrated the Dhamma. He left uncertainty behind him. His doubts vanished. He acquired perfect confidence, and he became independent of others in the teacher's dispensation. He said to the Blessed One, Lord, once when I was a boy, I made five aspirations. Now they are fulfilled. Once when I was a boy, I thought, if only I might be anointed on a throne. That was the first aspiration I made, and it has been fulfilled. The second was, if only I might encounter during my life a fully enlightened arahant, and that has been fulfilled. The third was, if only I might be able to do honor to that blessed one, and that has been fulfilled. The fourth was, if only the blessed one would teach me the Dhamma, and that has been fulfilled. The fifth was, if only I might understand the blessed one's Dhamma, and that, too, has been fulfilled. Magnificent, Lord, magnificent. The Dhamma has been made clear in many ways. Lord, let the Blessed One receive me as his follower who has gone to him for refuge for as long as breath lasts. Now, Lord, let the Blessed One, together with the Sangha Bhikkhus, accept tomorrow's meal from me. The Blessed One accepted in silence. When the king saw that he had consented, he rose from his seat, and after paying homage to him, he departed, keeping him on his right. <coughs> then when the night was ended, he had good food of various kinds prepared, and he had the time announced. It is time, Lord. The meal is ready. 
Since it was now morning, the Blessed One dressed, and taking his bowl and outer robe, he went into Rajagaha with a large following of bhikkhus, with a thousand bhikkhus, with all the former Madhidhar ascetics. Now as they went, Saka, ruler of gods, assumed the form of a Brahman youth, and he stood before the Blessed One with his hands ra raised palms together, facing the Sangha, headed by the Blessed One, singing these stanzas. To Rajika he came, controlled and free, and with him former matted hair ascetics, controlled and free. Bright as a golden jewel, the Blessed One went into Rajagaha. To Rajagahi, Rajagahi he came, quieted and free. To Rajagahi he came, released and free. To Rajagahi he came, attained and free. He, with ten ways of life and with ten powers, seeing ten things, possessor of ten factors, and with the following ten hundred strong, the Blessed One went into Rajagaha. So that uh, the, <clears throat> the ten ways of life are the, what are called the Aryavasa, or the Aryan, disp or Aryan dispositions, noble dispositions. And uh, <clears throat> that is... <coughs> and that uh, is got rid of here a monk has got rid of five factors what is that let me So he's got rid of sensuality, a will, sloth, and twits, the five hindrances, uh, possessed of six factors on seeing um, the, the senses <coughs> um, and the objects of the senses. He is neither pleased nor displeased, but remains uh, equanimous, mindful, and clearly aware. Uh, he's established the one guard, guarding his mind with mindfulness. As four supports, he judges that <coughs> that one thing is to pursued, one thing endured, one thing avoided, one thing suppressed, and one thing su suppressed. Uh, he's got rid of individual belief um, in the sense of probably that it's sakaya ditti, or belief in self. Um, <coughs> he's abandoned the quest for sense desires for rebirth or for um, some kind of being even within the holy life. He's pure of motive, uh, abandoned thoughts of sensuality, ill will and cruelty. And he has um, calmed uh, the uh, emotions and uh, given up pain and pleasure, a dear disappearance of gladness and sadness. <coughs> He's well emancipated in heart, liberated from the, any, the thoughts of greed, hatred, and delusion, well liberated by wisdom. He understands uh, greed, hatred, and delusion have been abandoned, cut off at the root, uh, destroyed. So that is, the, um, say, the ten ways of life. And then the, <coughs> the ten... Um, Powers are the the ten powers of of the uh, of the Tathagata. <coughs> and that comes in the that one that that what I quoted from was from Diga. Nikaya, the uh, long discourse, Diga 33, the Sangiti Sutta. And then the, uh, the ten powers are uh, related in the Mahasi Hanada um, discourse, which is, the say, the greater discourse on the lion's roar, and it's the Buddha himself. Um, you know, 
in this case, roaring his lion's roar. And the ten powers of a Tathagata, um, possessing which he claims the herd leader's place, roars his lion's roar in the assembly, sets rolling the wheel of Dhamma, what are the ten? Here the Tathagata understands as it actually is the possible as possible and the impossible as impossible. And that is a Tathagata's power <coughs> that the Tathagata has by virtue of which blah, blah, blah. And then the, Tathagata, the second one, the Tathagata understands as it actually is the results of actions undertaken, past, future, and present, by way of possibilities and um, <coughs> and causes. Um, the, the third is the Tathagata understands as it actually is the ways leading to all destinations. Uh, fourth is uh, the Tathagata understands as it actually is the world with its many and different elements. Um, understands as it actually is how being this is the fifth one that Tathagata understands as it actually is how beings have different inclinations. Six, the Tathagata understands as it actually is the disposition of the faculties of other beings, other persons. Seventh is the Tathagata understands as it actually is the defilement, the cleansing, and the emergence in regard to the jhanas, the liberations, the concentrations, and the attainments. <coughs> the eighth, uh, the Tathagata recollects his manifold past lives, and uh, that's stock phrases, that is one birth, two births, and uh, thus with their aspects and particulars, he recollects his manifold past lives. And the ninth is divine eye, purified and surpassing the human, sees beings passing away and reappearing, inferior and superior. He understands how beings pass on according to their actions. The tenth, uh, by realizing for himself with direct knowledge that Tathagata here and now enters upon and abides in the deliverance of mind and deliverance by wisdom that are taintless with the destruction of the taints. So that, and that, uh, that so that's in Majima 12, at, and uh, um, they're all, uh, um, if anybody wants to, Look those up and and see the uh, um, <coughs> explanations on that. It's in the each one has a footnote so that they can be explained. I won't go go into all of it. And, that's, and then the ten powers, and then seeing ten things <coughs> are the ten kinds of wholesome action and the ten kinds of unwholesome action so that the uh, um, which follows the uh, <coughs> somewhat the, the uh, say the say the actions of body so unwholesome the the uh, the wholesome is the abstention from killing living beings, exemption of taking what's not given, exemption of misconduct and sensual pleasures. And then there's four that are, the, these are the ten kusala kamapada and the ten akusala kamapada, courses of the wholesome, courses of the unwholesome, and the, with speech, abstention from false speech, uh, it's all abstention from malicious speech, is abstention from harsh speech, abstention from gossip. And then <coughs> the uh, actions of mind that are wholesome, uncovetousness, non-ill will, and right view are wholesome. And of course the, the opposite <coughs> are the, are the un, unwholesome. <coughs> and then the, in that, Possessor of ten factors. Um, these are the 
this the ten factors are, are what are called the ten qualities of the aseka, the the one who is beyond training or the long a non-learner, this is somebody who is a <coughs> uh, <coughs> well, who's a, uh, an arahan, the ad adept, the beyond the training. And that's uh, it's the Eightfold Path, uh, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, and then right knowledge and right liberation, samma jnana and samma vimutti. Uh, so those are the, what this verse is re referring to, it's kind of obscure, and um, in two little sentences, uh, it's, it's packed it in with uh, all sorts of stuff. So that, uh, so then it's this, <coughs> so when people saw a Saka ruler of gods, they said, the young Brahman is, is, is handsome, beautiful, and graceful. Who is he? When this was said, he addressed them in stanzas. He is a saint, <coughs> controlled, <coughs> always, and purified, without a peer, in all the world, sublime, accomplished, and I am one that follows him. Then the Blessed One went to King Bimbisara's dwelling, and he sat down on the seat made ready, surrounded by the Sangha Bhikkhus. With his own hands, the king served and satisfied the Sangha headed by the Buddha. When the Blessed One had eaten and no longer had the bowl in his hand, the king sat down at one side. <coughs> when he had done so, he thought, Where could the Blessed One live that is neither too far from town nor too near, with a way in and a way out, accessible to people who seek him, unfrequented, by day and quiet by night, undisturbed by voices, with an atmosphere of aloofness, where one can lie hidden from people, favorable for retreat. Then he thought, This park of ours, the bamboo grove, has all these qualities. Suppose I pre present the bamboo grove to the Sangha headed by the Buddha. <coughs> then he took a gold jug and he dedicated the bamboo grove to the Blessed One with the washing of hands, saying, Lord, I give this bamboo grove to the Sangha Bhikkhus, headed by the Buddha. The Blessed One accepted the park. Then when he had, in, had instructed, incited, roused, encouraged Sanya Bimbisara, king of Magadha, with talk on the Dhamma, he rose from his seat and departed. <coughs> and this as a uh, <coughs> the offering of the the bamboo grove was the first um, that that is the first say place for uh, residents of the of the sangha that was 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 formally offered and then the the king bimbisara's pouring of water as a as dedication is I mean, it's probably an ancient Indian custom, but it's also an example given for the tradition of water pouring as a symbol for the dedication of merit uh, up until this day. It's sort of, I'd say, like a, a transferring of, of blessings, a transferring of, uh, of, of merit. And so it's, it's, that's what's cited uh, in Buddhist culture and tradition as a, as a uh, precedent for, uh, as an example. <coughs> So that's the end of that particular section, and it goes on. The next chapter is on the two chief disciples. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Well, <coughs> it uh, it was a say a place where they uh, I don't there's no record of of King Bimbisara offering like he offered the land, but there's no record of of him offering 
dwelling place. Of course, it turned into a monastery after. Uh, and and there's, say, to this day, there are, say, at the, at the bamboo grove, there's excavations of the uh, uh, residences and dwellings, but there's no, <coughs> um, how do you say, record of King Bimbisara initiating the dwelling places. But Rajagaha, Raj, Rajagaha was a, uh, a, it was a capital city, and then by the king, um, say, receiving uh, uh, himself or giving himself to the Buddha as a, as a, uh, as a disciple, uh, then that would have certainly set a, a precedent for um, other well-known and, and uh, say, wealthy donors and patrons to, to, uh, to help to support the, the Sangha. Uh, I say that's opposed to uh, <coughs> when um, Anatta Pindaka invites the Buddha to go to uh, Savati and he prepares I mean, he, he prepares a place, but he also prepares uh, residences uh, for the uh, for to receive the receive the sangha. Um, but certainly, t it it it's a uh, yeah. To this day, it is a uh, um, uh, the 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 uh, the remnants of the monastery are still visible. It's a there's a park. There's places where there's excavations and showing where the old uh, buildings uh, would have been. It's outside of it's outside of old Rajagaha and, out, and outside of new Raj, Rajgir, uh, which are close by. Do you remember what, what I can't, I haven't got a clear memory of, of uh, what excavations are there? Um, it's mostly the brick, which they say usually is not from the time of the Buddha, mm -hmm. but uh, <coughs> second century AD. Mm -hmm. But um, I know there's like big bathing ponds, and mm -hmm. they found where the wells are. Mm -hmm. It's also where the first where the Obadi Mokro were sighted. It's a, just a historical um, site in the Sankar Buddha. There was big ponds there, but we had the Kate Sark who told the pastor or something. Mm -hmm. so, it was definitely a monastery. Yeah. And I think they had kutis, but I'm not sure if that's in the cities. Yeah, and certainly Raj, Rajgaha was a, a place that, say, the Buddha and the Sangha were always rotating in and out of. Well, it was a capital. A capital of one of the larger kingdoms in, in, in northern India at the time. Comparable to, if not larger than, than uh, 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 Kosovo, which is where where uh, King Pasenadi, and King Pasenadi became a great supporter, patron, disciple of the Buddha, but there's no record of of him ever realizing the Dhamma, whereas right from day one. Uh, King Bimbisar um, had this real stream entry, and, and he was always referred to as a righteous king. <clears throat> Is there a precedence in the suttas or for uh, a similar system of training where, like, uh, a monk will stay at a training monastery for some time and go out for go out into the woods or somewhere more remote for some time and then come back. It's in the Vinaya. There's there is a uh, uh, I would say a a requirement <coughs> uh, for the. A newly ordained bhikkhu to s 
stay with the teacher um, who gives the ordination or a, say, a suitable person who's been kind of agreed upon her uh, and uh, for the first five years and then after five years then one is considered what's called Nisayamutika, sort of free from dependence. But that can be um, uh, if the person, if the, the bhikkhu is not very well behaved, not very well trained, then, uh, then he's, he is um, required to stay in, in say, under dependence until, until the, the teacher uh, feels confident in his, in his training. So the Buddha laid out a, a quite a clear system of training uh, and it wasn't so much tied to a place <coughs> as opposed to to the, the teachers and the preceptors um, and to for them to take responsibility for for the uh, for that training and uh, of course over time then then one even in Buddha's time the, the uh, um, Actual places of practice began to become more stable. Uh, there was a lot more wandering and and uh, uh, more fluidity in the early days. But even during the the, the time of the Buddha, uh, then he would. <coughs> we spent. 19 years in Savatthi? Savatthi was, yeah, yeah, I believe 19 years. At the Jada Grove and then, and then even in Savatthi, well, at the Jada's Grove and then he did, I think he spent some of the, at least one or two years at the, uh, the Palace of Megara's mother, which is another, mm-hmm. another monastery that was established in Savatthi. Yeah, and then at Rajagaha he lived at Voltage Peak, Voltage Peak, five. Years. Mm, yeah, yeah, which is is a probably a, it's kind of the puja of, of, mm. of uh, you know it, it was just because of its its I can imagine because it, the, 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 it's hard to have a large community there. <coughs> the, the, it's quite a, a little bit rugged and and there's, there's, it's on the side of the hills about halfway up. What's, do you know what the name of that mountain is? Um, well, that's the. I um, can't remember the name. In the, in the, in the it's the one of the things that came up in my mind. I should look up the name of that mountain. Well, I know it's Vulture's Peak. Yeah, Vulture's Peak is, is about halfway up that mountain. Yeah. Uh, uh, Raj Krut or something. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that. that uh, you know, there were increasingly places of, of, of stability, and, but, but the, uh, yeah, the training was, was, uh, was very much around the relationship between the, the uh, uh, teachers and preceptors. And there probably wasn't, there was probably <coughs> more, um, I, and this is speculation, more teachers and preceptors in terms of it's become a lot more formalized in Thailand um, because of <coughs> its administration and it's, it's uh, uh, the uh, say like in Thailand you're only allowed to have well, you have administrative districts for the government, and you have administrative districts for the for the, uh, for the So you've got provincial, and you've got district, and you've got sub-district. And so you can't have more than one prefecture in like a sub-district and double. It's usually a collection of both. 12, 10 to 20 villages, and so you can have more than one preceptor and 
and that preceptor is, is supposed to be responsible for the ordination and the, the, uh, uh, the training doesn't really happen that much, but, but it, that's supposed to be, so that, um, uh, and, and if a monk, then you have to carry your certificate of ordination with you wherever you go, and if you happen to misbehave, or if you got sick and died or something, um, then in there is the record of who your preceptor is, and what your whole monastery is, and they, they will, you're, 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 you're still responsible. And so that sometimes preceptors will get called up and say, we've got this monk here, that he's not doing what he should be doing. <coughs> or it was like when, when Ajahn Chah was living in, in the, uh, he was very, very sick um, with, with malaria when he was on Tudong. And uh, I think it was malaria. Anyway, he was very, he was very sick. And, and he got to a point where he wasn't, because he kept sort of going in and out of these fevers and kind of passing out. And he had, uh, and he had his certificate of ordination prepared to, because he felt that if he got any sicker, um, and uh, he wanted to burn his certificate of ordination so that uh, it wouldn't be burdening anybody. They wouldn't be able to, uh, if they just found a body of a dead monk, then, then they, would, they wouldn't be bothering either his family or his, his, his home monastery. We've got a whole new chapter to start next day, so we'll start it's 25 after, 24 after. We'll leave it for you tomorrow.